at Chris Ford, who everyone in the media enjoyed covering as a player and as a coach, passed away at the age of 74. Uh, he had suffered a heart attack a month ago. I'm just going to simply give the floor to you uh, in regards to the life of Chris Ford. There were so many aspects uh, to Chris Ford uh, in terms of the career arc and 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 uh, the effect, the number of people that he touched, uh, and 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 each of them feel a, a major loss today. They start with uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey, his hometown. They went to Holy Spirit High School, where he remains the greatest player in the school's history. I believe I am told still the scoring leader. Uh, I remember people telling me about it. you had to see this phenomenon, this six foot five sort of plodding guy who would bring the ball up, pass it off, and then turn around and post somebody up uh, in high school. And he goes to Villanova where he plays on very successful Villanova teams. He's an all-time big five legend. The 1971 Villanova team went to the uh, championship game against UCLA. Uh, the people remember Howard Porter, of course, but uh, Chris Ford was the captain and star uh, uh, as well as that team. Uh, has a 10-year NBA career, began with the Detroit Pistons, uh, uh, and, and established himself as a solid guy, a uh, solid defensive player, so, despite having underwhelming physical assets for the NBA. Uh, he, uh, he was not a great, he wasn't fast, he wasn't that strong, but he knew how to play basketball. And, and the, the, he eventually comes to the Celtics, and we'll talk about that. But uh, that's so no, then we get to the, the, uh, the coaching thing. Uh, he coaches the Celtics, uh, one of the four guys I can, that uh, played for and coached the Celtics, and um, and there he interacted with with media uh, as well, uh, and 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 won over just by being himself. The overwhelming image and 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 memory that Chris Ford left <clears throat> with people, uh, and 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 my business is he was the most normal human being I ever covered uh, as, as a professional or even collegiate coach. He was absolutely, and that's covering some ground because we got some, nothing wrong with Brad Stevens. He's a very normal human being, but somehow Chris Ford was the uh, epitome of, of your next door neighbor who, oh, by the way, not going to the insurance company, but he was just going to the Boston Garden to work. He was absolutely every man. He was the nicest human being, the most unpretentious person of stature that I, I ever met. And that's saying a lot because I knew some good ones starting with Havlicek. And uh, he, he just, he just, over, he just overwhelmed people by just being uh, normal and nice. And oh, by the way, uh, you know, having this athletic connection. Uh, and he touched everybody that way everywhere he went. And, and I interject uh, real quick before yes. you get to his career. The one um, I did, I I knew him a little bit. I met him. I covered it, but I didn't know him the way you or Jackie or Dan, Jackie McMullen or Dan Shaughnessy did or Peter May. I just remember Doug Lane, who was the engineer of the Celtics radio broadcast with Glenn Ordway and Johnny Most. And of course, it is. <clears throat> it, it is. And still does. It still handles the Red Sox and, this, and, and well, not the Celtics anymore, but still is, is a, a live game producer for the, for um, WEEI. He would ride to the game with Chris. Mm -hmm. Now that's when he was, you know, assistant coach, head coach, mm -hmm. you know, I just have a hard time and I love, I'll, I'll pick on doc rivers because, I, but I love doc. You know, it's I don't see the radio engineer riding to the game with doc rivers or and i and this is not to demean doug i mean no. doug, i mean this just proves like what a regular guy they lived in the same neighborhood or they lived in the same town so doug as the radio engineer would jump in the car with the head coach and ride to the game that's like okay doug's gonna jump in the car and ride to the game with pat riley <laughs> you know i mean it's just <laughs> i mean and that's 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 to re re-emphasize what you're saying i'm getting a wonderful uh, responses to a tweet that I had uh, I, I put out of, about Chris uh, from people who can or giving me their own personal experience with him, uh, having met him in, in various capacities, uh, including someone talking about how uh, one afternoon after coaching the Celtics, he coached a kids game that night in Methuen. Oh, really? And uh, but people talking about encountering him at shopping malls or right. gas stations or wherever and how gracious he was. Uh, it, it's just universal. Uh, it's just who he was. He was just a wonderful guy. And that's why there's really a lot of you mentioned heavy hearts. There's a lot of heavy hearts all over the place. I mean, I'm telling you, and in, 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 in New Jersey and in, in big five area and in, and in all throughout the NBA. Uh, now, and let's talk about him as a player. Uh, he was, he got everything out of what he had to work with everything. And, but he had one great asset that, that got him. He was, he could shoot from long distance so that when the, uh, three point shot came in, he had the honor 
and 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 it's in all it's the lead of all the obits. You know, uh, you go on ESPN and you go on the it's a lead. Chris Ford made the first three pointer in NBA history, which he did on the night of October 12th, 1979. Celtics started, I guess, a little earlier than other teams. So it just so happened that when he planted himself in that right corner on that on that transition, and they threw him the ball, and he took that famous Chris Ford little set shot, with which the there was a you could slip the morning paper underneath, maybe. Uh, and that was the first three pointer in NBA history, and he went on to you know to help along with Larry make the Celtics uh, an early sort of three point threat before other teams were. Um, so he had that going for him, but uh, he he just and, and he he just knew how to play. Um, he was the starting guard on a on a championship team in 1981, along with Tiny Archibald. He was the starting two guard, and I can tell you something. He played a series in 1980 against the um, uh, uh, Rockets, and uh, uh, he was and he guarded Calvin Murphy. And they said, "How can plotting six five Chris Ford guard five nine rocket ship Calvin Murphy?" Well, he figured out a way. He figured out the angles. He did it, and he and he had a great series. Um, so uh, it, you know, it, it, he figured out a way. He figured out the angles. He did it, and he and he had a great series. Um, so uh, it, you know, it, it, it's just so many things I can say about about Chris. But uh, he, he is truly going to be missed. Let's talk about Chris as a coach for the Celtics because he was there at the beginning of the glory days with the Bird era yep. as a player, and then he moved on to the bench which is a very difficult transition. And I viewed him as an assistant. Let's talk about him as an assistant coach for a minute, because sometimes that's, that's overlooked now, especially in this day and age when they have eight of them. Um, but Chris as an assistant, it seems to me was probably very, very valuable to that team. Oh, well, he was. And, and one reason, <clears throat> you know, being, you know, Casey you know, with Casey as coach, uh, you know his personality was so low key, uh, and and they they blended well. Uh, he he got a bad break in 1989-90. They got off to a sensational start. They were like 28 and five. <clears throat> Things looked great, and then Larry's back went out. Right. And and beginning of you know three years of you know uh, well Larry played tonight and did he practice yesterday and, and Chris was uh, you know kind of submarine by that. I mean yeah that that team had a shot. That team had a shot, and uh, if Larry had stayed healthy. Uh, I'm not suggesting he was a great coach at all. I mean, he was a good and decent NBA coach. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I think of him more uh, as a as a player as, as much as a coach. But I got to tell you one anecdote that that um, kind of amplifies what I was saying earlier about the kind of guy he was and his reaction, the normal human reaction. His final, the Celtics' final game at the Boston Garden was against the uh, the Magic. In, 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 in Shaq and Shaq and Penny Hardaway uh, in the 1995 uh, playoffs. And I was, yeah, I was there. I think we all were there. <laughs> right. Well, we were all, that was the last game in the Garden, as it turned out, because they lost the game. Somewhere right. in the second half, maybe it was the late third, maybe it was the early fourth, in a game where they were struggling, uh, but were not out of contact with the Magic, Chris Ford turns around to the press table. And, and uh, uh, we, we were sitting, you know, three or four or five people right proximity to the to the bench turns around and says how are we in this game <laughs> which i did write about i think and it was the most the strangest most human reaction of an nba coach to anything that i ever heard in my in my 54 year career of, of coach, you know being a president in the nba games and that was chris ford it turns around as a how, how are we in this game <laughs> that is that was you know I mean, I just nobody else I know was going to do that. That was Chris. Well, that also uh, harkens back to the days when you would have Bob Ryan, Jackie McMullen, Dan Shaughnessy, Peter May, all sitting at what now uh, are, are seats that go for twenty five hundred a pop. Quite high price seats. Yes, that's the old days. That's the days when uh, you know, you know, you don't want you don't want me mounting that soapbox today. No, the, and, and <laughs> as we go, I want to do a, a transition here because obviously we want to celebrate the life of Chris Ford. Um, and you just did it eloquently, perfectly in, in the only way that Bob Ryan can. Uh, but I do recall uh, the Gene Shoe story. Uh, didn't he turn around and when you were sitting? 